assembly language tutorials part 2 we'll talk about x86 64 architecture the CPU design it has few components it has clocks each instruction it takes certain amount of clock cycles like it is being processed by the CPU so how much time it would take the CPU knows that so those are clock cycles when one instruction is completed the next instruction is executed this process is basically called synchronization you do not do anything unless something which you want to happen before should have have happened right I hope it makes sense then there is control unit basically you have the, the CPU has the ability to address data from the memory store the data back into the memory or reading data from the IO devices network card and stuff like that so those are dealt with the control unit they, these are again electrical signals so and th we have some circuitry for that some real wires itched into the motherboard so the current flows through that so the cur current flows through these circuits and we call them bus so there are address bus and then there are memory bus control bus so in control bus what happens is suppose you want to read something from the memory so you specify the address in the address bus and the control signal is also sent through the control bus hey uh, the CPU is telling the RAM that hey I want to read this from the memory and then the RAM returns that data stored in the memory at that location in the data bus these are three essential bus so this is how the CPU works means it reads the data or the instruction from the memory checks that whether it's an instruction or it's a data it does something on that the output is further stored into the memory so that's what happens in the CPU program execution OS loads a program into memory when you double click it or you invoke the program from the command line so the program is loaded into the memory and then the CPU has to go to the entry point of that program only then it can start executing after it is done after the program has some like return zero it doesn't have to do any further processing the operating system unloads that program from the memory so that the memory can be used for other programs CPU operation modes there are several there are real mode there are protected mode virtual mode system management mode so what happens is in the real mode you are actually accessing the RAM the hardware directly in protected mode you do not in protected mode also there is a concept of virtual memory it means there is another program which helps you access the RAM and that program is called virtual memory it's like a manager for managing the memory you could go on your own and uh, read more about it but it's like addressing that many space in the RAM so these are different modes registers how do we store the data once the CPU has obtained the data from the memory it has to store it somewhere for further processing so we use registers for that there are so many of them so uh, you will see a lot of registers in the forthcoming videos when we will actually write assembly programs so I will not go through each of them so they are self-explanatory and I have put little notes around that so you could go through the slides as well or you could pause the video and read more on that there are even more registers segment registers they are actually not used much in the protected mode programming which in our case but they are also there they are in fact used by the operating system instruction pointer it's a very important register so which knows that the CPU is going to execute this next instruction and that instruction is located at this address in the memory so instruction pointer has to know before what it is going to do also there is an interesting note there and in security 
we control, we own the EIP, we control the program. So it's very important register to to make sure that your program doesn't get to be controlled by any different kind of input so that the program causes some other behavior which is not wanted. Like if you have HTTP server, it should serve the web pages. It should not allow a remote program to run something in your computer. That would be a big security issue. There we have eFlags register. Each time an instruction is executed, what happened after that? So those information are stored in the eFlags register. There are so many of them and you could pause the video and go through that. I have put little notes around that for the same reason. There are more registers, MMX registers, which could be used for graphics computing, floating point, so high precision mathematics. There is XMM registers as well. Then again we have dedicated micro in the microprocessor, basically the processor, so there is something called a coprocessor which separately deals with the floating point it's not that you are purchasing a separate processor you, are pur you purchase a single chip inside the some section is dedicated for floating point which does the computation on high precision mathematics they have different registers as you can see over here ST0, ST1 and so on so those are also used for computation but for different purpose then we have 64-bit architecture in which we have, of course, we have uh, instead of 32-bit registers, we have 64-bit registers. So when you hear that that my computer is 64-bit, what the hell that means? It means that in the motherboard, between RAM and the CPU and between even the wirings of the CPU, the bus width is actually 64 wires. That's what it is that's how you send that much data so that's all about like the processor architecture what it means actually at the electrical level so there are more registers and they are bigger in size a computer works application OS bias hardware your hardware you would have heard this myth that the kernel controls the hardware that's wrong it doesn't it goes through the BIOS each time only the BIOS can control the hardware. The OS kernel, the word OS means the kernel. The application means the normal application that we write that resides in our hard drive, part of the operating system. So if something is happening in the application, it calls the kernel, kernel calls the BIOS, the BIOS is the one which actually communicates with the hardware. I hope it makes sense and uh, ask me more questions and that's the end of uh, quick I would say the end of x86-64 architecture there's nothing much here and that's all there is I hope you like it and uh, if you like this video put a thumbs up and I catch you guys in the third video have a good day bye bye